Jason, do you have a plan to fight the elites because awaken, uh, besides awakening more people? A, a plan to counter Agenda 2030. I'm sorry, I don't. The only plan that I can see is that I created an informed field, all right? I spent years of research putting all this together, knowing that I was going a certain direction. That certain direction completely changed when I had a motorcycle accident. It actually enriched my research and gave it context, and now I understand. Because I was never going to reveal anything about simulacrum and simulation theory and all that. It took a motorcycle accident for me to recalibrate everything I had ever learned and assumed, because it took the motorcycle accident for me to realize that all this data that I had shelved and compartmentalized and put away needed to be brought back out and put into the whole of, of my archives. Because I was doing the same thing that scientists do, and that's wrong. If you're you can't you cannot shelve data and cherry pick what you want to reveal to 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 others and then say that you have discovered anything at all. I couldn't do that. The motorcycle accident brought me clarity. It brought me clarity. It also brought me an awareness that that I'm just an avatar. Nothing was real to me during the motorcycle accident. Not only was I in slow motion, but I had predicted exactly how I was going to land upside down on this concrete pylon. I had predicted that I was going to live. I was absolutely calm and I was flying through the air. I was upside down. I was watching my motorcycle do somersaults. I remember hitting something and spinning, but when it happened, I didn't feel anything. I now know in retrospect, my rebar went through my whole arm and spun my whole body around. I, I, I crashed into a construction project. So I'm a, I, I remember there was just no fear. It was so surreal to me. And it was in slow motion. I remember I remember all of a sudden uh, an impact on my back. But I was upside down. And when I hit, I landed on the back of my neck. And then my knees hit the ground in front. And I saw my knees come down. I landed in like fetal position. and Because uh, when I hit the concrete pylon, I just slid down. But I remember unfolding and standing up. And there was an intersection, and people were, were leaving their car doors open, and they were running to my location. And I remember looking at it, and I was so interested in these people. I just remember look, I was at peace, I, and I did not know that all my clothes were on, bar, were on a barbed bar fence. I didn't know. I didn't know that uh, I had, I didn't know that I had, how much my body had went through to get to the, to the point where I hit that pylon and just, just fell down. But uh, it's just so weird. Because I remember that I'm absolutely aware of my entire environment, but I am not in any way connected to my avatar. My avatar was doing what I what what I was the motions I was going through, which was standing up and looking around. But I was so detached from my avatar that I didn't feel any pain. I didn't feel any fear. Didn't feel anything. I wasn't even in shock. I just remember looking around, and it was only by other people's reactions to what, the way I looked. You know, standing there almost naked, uh, blood all over my whole body. I, I can imagine what they saw because I'm covered with tattoos all the way to my feet, and I remember. And I'm, now I'm covered with blood, and I don't even realize I got this piece of bent, like an L-shaped bent rebar in my arm, and. Uh, other people were handing me shirts. A Mexican guy handed me a t-shirt. He took it off his body, handed me a t-shirt, and gave it to him. And the lady took it and then started wrapping my head. And I, I thought it was really odd. I was like, I was like, come on, man, this is not even that serious. And they made me sit down. It was only when I sat down and saw the rebar in my arm that things started coming back to me. Like, damn, I'm supposed to be in pain. That's not normal. And uh, that's when things started rushing back. And I woke up in an ambulance. And when I woke up in an ambulance. Uh, I looked up at this female, this female's face, and the first thing I asked her what time it was, and she kind of looked at me shocked, and but she looked, she looked, and she told me what time it was, and all I told her was, oh, I'm, I'm missing 17 minutes, and she, I just remember she looked really shocked, and I passed back out again, and I woke up in the ER, and they were doing surgery on me, and uh, uh, the, she had reported to the doctor that we had had that exchange. It's just really weird, but. The whole thing was so surreal, but it was during my healing because that day wasn't bad. The surgery wasn't bad. The next day wasn't bad. Three days later, I could not move. Be and it's because of the impact upside down. All my internal organs had sloshed inside my body. Even, even my lungs had just ripped out from my, my rib cage, just tore everything out. Even breathing was so hard. And it took me a long time to, uh, 
I, was, I had a cool landlord back then, and I, and I had just told her straight up, I can't move, can't dress, can't feed myself, can't do anything. She cut my clothes, my old hospital clothes off, and I just took care of me. And But it was during that healing period that that I was uh, I was reassessing everything. I was like, man, I had only released one YouTube video. Now I'm, re now I'm reassessing everything. I said, you know what? I've been moving in the wrong direction. Everything I've said about the Phoenix is correct. Nemesis X object, everything that I've published, all, everything in my Chronicon, everything's correct. My perspective has been wrong. Now, all these independent phenomena that I had left alone, such as the alteration of the calendars, the change, the, how many days it changed, and all, all that made sense now. These are coding protocols. Mandela effect, deja vu, synchronicity, coincidence, all these things could now be incorporated and I can make sense of them now. These insect storms that happened in 1867, 1868, 1870, and 1871. Uh, these, this weird holographic images that appeared in the sky in 1917, Fatima. Now all these anomalies that I had documented that had never really made sense, these giant cigar-shaped objects that appear before plagues and start dumping body parts of decayed animals out, which which which, which causes plagues and putrid and stuff like the Great Black Death Plague of 1347. It says, all this now makes sense. In 1902, these giant cigar-shaped objects were seen by, 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 by giant ship liners in the, in the Atlantic coming out of the ocean and going into the sky. And then the, the Bannock Burn, gigantic ship barge the bannock burn was leaving the great lakes heading toward europe with hundreds of thousands of bales of food and stuff and it vanished in full sight of a ship captain and and, and the crew of another ship and they had documented it. so the bannock burn couldn't have disappeared though it disappeared right there in the great lakes but the great lakes aren't deep enough for a ship to be lost but they combed the Great Lakes in 1902, 1903, 1904, and even today, the Bannock Burn has never been found. And it's too big of a ship to have been lost, but strange lights were seen in the clouds at night. Other ships reported weird sightings of things moving in the sky, and then the Bannock Burn vanished in full sight of other ship. So, many things happened in 1902 like that, but all these things now made sense to me everything all my discoveries and ancient calendar systems the anomalies that never made sense before how everything was just absolutely so perfect one of the key denominators of my studies on calendrics is the fact that every single calendar known to man was all created in retrospect ex post facto meaning the start date of the calendar be began years after the events that it depicts i'll give you an example uh the Mayan long count, 31, thir uh, 31, 13 BC. The Mayan long count, we have no evidence of the existence of the Mayan long count at all until about the second century BC. We have no evidence, no references from monuments, nothing. However, the monuments that were discovered show that the begin date for the calendar system that was being used in the ancient Americas began 31, 13 BC. The Hindu records, the Jewish calendar, the Annus Mundi calendar, Anno Pyramid of David Davison, the Roman Julian calendar, all these calendar, the Anno Domini calendar is perfectly, is a great one to start with. The Anno Domini calendar was supposed to start with 1 AD. Did it? No. Started in 522 AD, and they covered it up and tried to make it look like it, st it was invented in 526, but started in 532. They did all this the Roman Catholic Church, the papacy, did all this to cover up the Phoenix event because a major Phoenix event occurred in 522 and then resulted with the Nemesis X object, which also appeared. It is the only year in all of recorded human history that both Phoenix and the Nemesis X object were in the system at the exact same time. It's called the Justinian Plague. It's the Justinian Apocalypse, all the weird stuff, the earthquakes and comets and fallout from the sky, the great plague that killed like a fourth of the world's population. All that happened right there. And the papacy tried to cover it up. I have a video about it. It's profound. 